Air Hustlers, we're back. What's going on, y'all? You here with Rochelle and, Rache- Rochelle and Chanel. Chanel, you sound That's so tired you. today. No, I'm not tired. I just, um, one of my girlfriends who came down from New York, um, you know, I'm in South Carolina, y'all, and um, she came down from New York to come and visit, and then we have a her friend, but somebody that I used to know um, is in mm. North Carolina with um, in a nursing home. And so she just sent me pictures and, you know, normally I'm a little upbeat, um, but she sent me pictures and I just found out some news that I did not know. I didn't know that this woman was, um, that she had suffered from, I maybe a mental illness, but she definitely suffered from some type of depression because she was a cutter. Oh. Um, yeah, so I just found that out because I said, well, what happened to her arm? She, in the picture she had, like her arm was wrapped up. And I said, mm-hmm. um, did she break her arm? Did she fall? You know, and they said, no, she's, you know, she used to cut. So I said, yeah, but that's, she's in a nursing home and that's, she's been in the nursing home for almost a year. So, and that's wrapped up. So right. is she cutting in the nursing home? That's why right. they wrapped it up. So I think that's what it was. <sighs> um, but, you know, again, people like to keep secrets. And I think that's what, you know, as a society, what's wrong with us is that we keep things a secret. We don't share stories of other people. So people who are suffering are suffering alone because the world doesn't know that they need help and they don't know that they're loved. Right. And sometimes it's hard for people, you know, pride or whatever they might think that nobody wants to help them, you know? So. Right. I can definitely see those viewpoints. That's so sad. Oh. It is, it is, it, it really is. Um, I know that <clears throat> originally when she came down to South Carolina, um, she said to me, Hey, do you think you guys can drive us up to North Carolina to go visit her? Um, and I said, I didn't really want to go because me and this woman, the one that's in a nursing home, we have a past um, that I don't really appreciate how I was treated in that past experience that I've had with her. So I didn't Mm -hmm. really want to go. Um, And I've been struggling with going because I was taking my friend to go see her friend, the friend that, you know, I didn't really want to do it, but I was going to do it anyway, because out of the kindness of my heart. But When I tell you I struggled with it, I was saying, you know, I was saying, oh, my God, like, please, Lord, don't let me go, because I know if I go, I don't want to go and pass judgment. I right. don't want to go and rehash the past. I don't want to go and be and be there full of anger and resentment. And just to be straight up honest with you, I don't want to I don't want to go there feeling hate because they, I don't know if there's hate in my heart for this woman. But I don't want to feel that Mm -hmm. as a Christian. I don't want to feel that. I want to be able to love on her regardless of what the past is. And I don't know if I don't know if I was if I was ready for that. I didn't know if I was ready for that. See, but God is good. You know, he's Mm -hmm. a good God. Um, she wound up making a way to South. She just called me and told me she made her way to North Carolina. Someone else drove her. You know, I think that God said, you know, if you're not, you're not going to be able to do this just yet. You understand? Mm-hmm. There's other things that I have in store for you. I'm preparing you or I'm, I'm working on you as an individual to let go of some of those things that happened in your past. And I don't want you in this woman's time, I need to go with that energy, to go with that type of, that little, that little faith, you know, right. that, that little, disab- that little disbelief, that, that, that ounce of hatred for somebody even an ounce of hatred can spread mm. it's festers and it's a cancer mm-hmm. you know so he so took me out of a situation that, that I wasn't going to be able to win because mm. he That's wants so- me to win mm-hmm. right it's so funny you said that I feel like it's kind of a forgiven season um mm-hmm. 
you know, you know what happened this summer with my daughter being in Georgia and all that stuff. Um, oh my God, but please, the fiasco. Right, the fiasco. Um, so my older sister did reach out and she is coming up here on the 18th, which was, okay. you know, surprising. Um, my, my niece is turning one, so they're having a party. So mm-hmm. just by that little olive branch um, to me and my youngest sister, that was kind of reassuring. Um, and another friend of mine, she was just telling me how a family member that she had fallen out with reached out to her. And she was like, you know what? I, I love holding grudges, but, you know, something told me to speak, you know, so just by you saying that, I just feel like it's a forgiving season. I even reached out to somebody that I didn't want to you know, (laughs) to just be like, Mm -hmm. you know, we can be cool. So I just feel like God's working. He's working. Like he's really, you know, um, rebuilding those lost connections that we had and he's making us, you know, kind of right. Bigger, the bigger people or the other people being bigger, you know, because life is too short and COVID this whole pandemic has proved that, you know, Mm Hmm. Yeah, because we lose people, we're losing people, we're right. losing, we're losing, we're losing people in droves. Yeah, you know, um, I think that, and you said us, the bigger people, or the other people, the bigger people, but right. I think, and I, I do agree, in in some way, I think if I had to explain it a little clearer. I think Uh that God doesn't want us to be the bigger people. He would prefer for us to be the other people. Oh, really? I would think that because the world is filled with what the world is filled with. And every, someone wants to be bigger. Someone is going to be smaller. If we look at it in in that type of category, Uh Um, as Christians, we are supposed to stand out and above we're supposed mm-hmm. to stand out from. Um, so it's okay for us to be the others. Mm. You have them, them, and you have them, those, they, and us. You know? So the, so the so others the as in us not reaching out? No, 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 no. Not, not us not reaching out. Us as, as setting ourselves apart. Setting right. ourselves apart from what is the norm. The norm is to hold a grudge. The norm is to re- retaliate. The norm is to get is to be vengeful. So right. I would rather be the other. And I'm and always open to necess- that. I don't necessarily have to be the bigger person. I don't want to be the bigger person. I just want to be the better person. Right. A, and not I'm- not even the. I want to be a better person because the better person is me comparing myself to to the opposite person. I want to mm-hmm. be a better person comparing myself to how I was yesterday. I just want to be better than I was yesterday. Right. And I'm always open to that, like rekindling things and kind of just putting what was in the past in the past. But I must say, you, you should never forget. And it doesn't mean you have to be buddy buddy or as close as you were with that person, but I, for, I feel like I've forgiven a lot of people without them even knowing <laughs> I may not speak to mm-hmm. them, but, you know, I've always forgiven them, you know, because you never know what anybody was going through at whatever time and life just goes on. So if anyone that I've ever fallen out with was to come back, like, you know, you know I respect that and I'm open to that. Like, I'm definitely not the type to just hold on forever. <laughs> Right, right. I, I think I and I think you and I are similar in that way. Um, I I think I told you about a friend that I had who I'm gonna re, I'm gonna let her remain um, remain anonymous <clears throat> for the sake of her privacy. Um, but like I, I I think I have I've had in my time on this earth I've had a lot I've been associated with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I've said to people, if you go through my phone book, I have over 1,200 contacts, over 1,200 contacts. And these are not just people that, um, you know, like a business person. These are people that if I call them, I would assume that they would be, they would reach out to help. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're not the inner circle, you know, and remember we discussed the inner circle. We, you know, um, Jesus had his disciples, but he also had the inner circle, you know, now the out the, the disciples, everyone shared with him, but he only shared with the inner circle. Mm. 
Okay, everyone trusted him, but he trusted his inner circle. Okay. So of all 1,200 contacts in my phone, um, there's, I've, I've held pretty good relationships, but there's one relationship that I am just, something in me is telling me that I need to try to fix that relationship. And I, and I tell you the truth, I've tried over and over and over for about 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, to, to fix that relationship. And most people would say, it's not even worth it. After 10 years, this person did you the way that they did you, you should let her go. You know, mm -hmm. like she's, I've had people tell me she's wag. I've had people tell me don't even waste the time <laughs> because these people know me and they know my character. Mm -hmm. you understand but then when I describe her you know to these people and how much I loved her I loved her like a sister you understand like mm -hmm. I wouldn't say more than my flesh and blood sister but mm -hmm. if she could have been my sister that it, it would have been heaven you know mm -hmm. it, like we were a match made in heaven I love this I have, girl I've had a few friends like that too Right. She allowed she allowed someone to get into her ear and tell her that I was talking crap about her. See, now what I don't understand is because we loved each other like that. I don't understand why you would listen to someone over me because, you know, my character because character says a lot. A character right. can tell you if your kid did something or not. Right. If someone came to me and told me my son, someone came to me and told me that my one that my son just slapped somebody out the blue. You're a liar, because I know my son's character. Now, if you told me, you told me that you had my son pressed up against the wall and he wilded out, that happened. I know he wilded out on you, because my son's character says. He, he doesn't want to fight. He's afraid to fight. Mm -hmm. Not He's not afraid because he's scared of you. He's afraid because he doesn't want to hurt you. Right. He's afraid of consequences, whatever those consequences may be. So I'm with this girl, I'm saying to myself, she, I would like, see, I considered her a friend, but I don't think she considered me a friend because if you can allow someone to come to you and tell you that I said something about you when you know how I am, right. you know, and all of these years of me being on this earth, I don't talk about people behind their back. I don't ever talk about people behind their back because I say it to your face. Now, if I said it to somebody else, that's because I already said it to your face and I'm probably gossiping about you, but it ain't nothing that I haven't already told you. I say that all the time. <laughs> you understand? It's right. not something that I haven't already told you. And in her case, in that instance, in any instance involving her, because I loved her, I love Tub. When I tell you this, this woman here was supposed to christen my kids. She never showed up to the christening, to the baptism. She was, she never showed up. My girls are nine years old. My twins are nine years old. She never showed up to not one birthday. Mm. She didn't show up to the christening. She was supposed to be the godmother. She, and it bothers me 10 years later because that's how much I love her. I literally, I don't shed tears for people. I don't shed tears for too many people um, because I'm more of a stern, when you do this, this is what happens and you have to deal with the consequences type of person. Mm -hmm. But this one here, I don't know what it is that she, not that what she has over me or what, what hold she has on me. I think that God is, he's playing He's he's trying to fix something there. He's mm. he's he's molding something there. There's something there that has to be fixed, even if it doesn't even if it's not fixed for us to have a future in the friendship, a relation, you know, a relational future. Mm -hmm. There's there has to be some type of closure because she's sitting around thinking that me of all people would have said something about her when I defended her. And, she, mm -hmm. and then that's another problem that we have eavesdroppers. And I want you eavesdroppers to understand this. When you have a girlfriend, okay, or a friend or someone that you care dearly for, I'm going to give you guys a, a clear example. And <clears throat> Shell, I want you to go ahead and, and we're going to do some little role play just real quick. Um, 
you have a, um, someone came to you and they told you, oh girl, um, I don't like your friend Chanel. Mm -hmm. What are you going to say? Or what are you going to do? And I'm going to tell, because we're friends, I'm, you, tell me what you say and what you're going to do. And I'm going to tell you how I will want you. I'm going to tell you the standard of our friendship. I'm, okay. These shoppers, I'm telling you, you need to start setting standards with your friends. You guys right. need, to decide, need to start saying, okay, listen, if we're going to be friends, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to operate as friends because there's rules to this. Right. Everybody want to have a code. Okay. But you're, if you can't have a standard in the code with a friend, if the friend don't know the standard in the code. It's just so like a tell, relationship, you know, friendships and people don't understand that. Right. Or relationships are not just sexual. Relationships are romantic, not just right. romantic. Relationships are not just spiritual. Relationships, there's different types of relationships. Right. And we don't build them in the right way, or we ex or we have these demands that nobody else signed up for. Mm. No, I, um, so I'm going to tell you, Shell, somebody these unspoken you, expectations or whatever unspoken expectations. But you get, but guess what? You the only one that know them, right? Because everybody don't live by the same code of of ethics and same morals and same values, and that's so, where communication comes in, like you're saying. <laughs> So you have to teach someone how to be your friend. Right. So now let's All go right, through the scenario. <laughs> someone came to you and said, ooh, Rochelle, that damn Chanel, you know, I don't like her. I heard she slept with someone. So what you, what you going to do as my friend? <laughs> well, you know what? Chanel is my friend. And I really think that if you heard that, instead of going around talking about it, I really think you should go to her because she's very nice. She's very understanding, and I'm sure she'd want to get to the bottom of it, and she wouldn't want you to perceive her in a bad light if it wasn't true. That's now thing. what? Now what would you would you come and tell me? Of course. Wrong. Wrong. Right. Now some friends would accept that. Some friends want you to do that. Some right. friends like the fact that you told that person you you, you defended my name to the person. You understand? You even came back and told me what was happening. But some people, some friends, that is acceptable. For me, that's not acceptable behavior. Well, listen, as my so friend, you're not supposed to come back and tell me nothing. You're supposed to handle that right then and there. And don't I don't never need to know what's going on. You handle it. So, but listen, in my absence, you are supposed to be my mouthpiece. Hmm, okay, good point. Because but that's listen, how done, I am. Right. You see, so this is where it's tricky because I've done this in the past where, you know, like I had in college, for example, I had a group of friends that I was close with and another group of friends that, you know, I was in an activity with, you know, we're in the dance team with. And so mm -hmm. the other girls were girlfriends with my boyfriend's friends. So mm -hmm. the other girls that I was on the dance team with were messing around with their boyfriends. So I was like, I'm going to keep it real. Because I hung out with them, you know, we did a lot of couple things. You know, they are not loyal to y'all. They're, you know, out here with that. And I don't want you to feel like or find out that I know by seeing me out with them because we roll with the same people. So I'm just letting you know that you guys need to, you know, figure that out. I don't want to be a bad friend, but by, you know, pretending like I'm playing both sides because I'm definitely not. And I would want you guys to let me know. It went bad. When I tell you, mm. <laughs> the other girls got mad. Those girls that I told got mad. Like, I was just, you know, um, long story short, they realized after the fact, and they were no longer with those guys. But I thought I was being a good friend by telling them. And the reason I said I would tell her, because I technically did put her in her place. You're not going to talk to me or anyone else about my friend. You should go to her. Now, the reason I feel like I came to you, Chanel, she told mm -hmm. me something that was going around about you. I told her, it's not, you know, you shouldn't be spreading it or coming to me about it. You should go to her. So in the event that she doesn't come to you, maybe you can go to her and be like, you know, I overheard that you heard something about me. What's good? You know? Right. See, but that, alone, but that alone causes chaos and confusion. 
Because once I once you bring it to me, now I'm going to approach the person on a third. This is not even third party. She heard it from somebody else and told you, and you told me that's what somebody else told you. Now I got to take what you told me and take it back to the person who heard it from somebody else. Mm. You see how that you see how that you see how that works. That's you're crazy. Right, you're right. I don't like all of that. See, but this is and but you know, this I've is why. Learned. Because when I mm-hmm. told people stuff, like, and they go back, I'm like, dang, I just wanted you to keep that in your back. Because that's how I am. Right. Like, I'm not a very, like, I'm not going to confront somebody if it doesn't concern me. If I don't, feel, if I feel like nobody's rumors, like, listen, I know everything. And if you're talking about me, obviously I'm doing something right. And I know where I stand. And I, I could care less about what other people are saying because the people that are closest to me and that know me, know me. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. so I don't go bring it up. Like I just keep that for my information and I just investigate or observe on my own. You know what I'm saying? Right. See, but I never want to throw somebody from, like under the bus or whatever. Right. But you also got to remember we come from two different worlds. Right. You know, I'm you, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to assume that you come from a, a household where, um, or a, a group of, or community, a community, let me say, or a culture where um, everybody is, everybody got it somewhat together, where there's a norm. You know, right. I came from group homes and off the street. You understand what I'm saying? Don't bring me no bad news. Which, which y'all know me as, tick, tick, boom. Handle it. Handle it, but and but, I'm the but, opposite, <laughs> right? My because as your friend, if someone would have, if someone would have come to me, and and mm-hmm. this is for for you to know how you how you're going to um, be my friend, okay? But how I'm going to, if someone comes to me and says to me, um, Ro- Rochelle, blah 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 blah, you ain't never going to know that they said it. You ain't never going to know what happened. You're going to be walking around this earth thinking that everything is all roses and dandelions. But you ain't never going to know what was said because I checked it. I hey, checked it. I didn't just always... check it. I didn't just, and I, and, and I didn't just check it and tell them to stop it. Oh, I made sure to it that it was ceased. But then again, what if there was some truth to whatever you found out and you didn't know and I did not inform you? Yes, Chanel, I was out there doing this and that, but I didn't want to tell you because, you know. But oh, No, because if there was truth to what somebody else is telling me and you didn't want to tell, and you didn't tell me, it doesn't matter. You're my friend. You didn't tell me because you thought it wasn't necessary for me to know. If you didn't tell me, what gives somebody else the right to tell me? To tell True. me your business. True. I see where you're coming from. Because you're my friend. And you see, it just all boils down to communication, like you said. And I feel like we don't do it enough in rela- person, like romantic relationships and friendships. Like we don't speak right. about these things. And unless right. you know the person's personality, character, and you know, you're never going to really know how to approach certain situations like that. Right. See, I have one rule. The one, I, and, and my rule is, and I think you already know that, um, somebody better tell me before I, I want to know from you before somebody else tell me. Mm-hmm. you know like I don't care if if my boo is cheating oh he better tell me because it's gonna be worse if I found out in these streets right if but these why? streets start talking it's gonna be worse for you so you well, better let's talk come about tell this. me how Girl. come females get mad at other females for telling them like I don't understand because because other females ain't telling me because you care about me. You telling me because you throwing it in my face. Not really. And then because you told me, how many people did you tell before you told me? Not really. You know, he's looking at the That's negative. That's why we get mad. Why That's why. At the negative? No. That's why. How come she just really couldn't be looking out? Like nobody be caring about other people, men like that. Uh, you know. Right, but you gotta understand the the, the female mindset. We don't trust y'all. <laughs> we don't oh women God. don't trust other women. It's crazy. I don't get it. I me, mean, me, if you find my cheat, see, I, I just had this conversation with one of my neighbors. I swear to God, I tell you no lie. 
<laughs> she said we was riding in the car going to get a colonic girl. We went and got the hydrotherapy, had our booty, our booty holes cleaned out. It's the best. And, yeah. So we was in the car talking and she was going through something with her friend, an associate of mine, but a friend of hers. And um, she was saying to me some, some stuff, you know, it's not really important what the situation was, but she she knew some stuff about the, about her friend's boyfriend, you know? And I'm just sitting there and I'm listening to her tell me the story. And so she was telling her friend, um, don't mess with the guy. You know, the guy got, the guy not into you. He's into other, he's into a different gender. He's not into you. And as oh, a friend, he, as a friend, he should have told her that. I mean, she should have told, she should have told her that because she's her friend. Not right. because she wants to spread gossip, not because she wants to throw dirt on his name, not because she wants to tell lies or truths. It don't even matter. It's for health reasons. You understand? He right. may not, he's not into you. He's into a different gender. And we don't, mm. I'm not knocking what nobody is into, but in the, not even a butt. There's but no that's butt. a conversation that needs to be friend. made in relationships when you first meet somebody. Like, let them decide mm. on whether they want to deal with somebody that, you right. know, both ways. Right. So, she was she was sharing with me that she told her friend about her the her friend's lover about her lover mm -hmm. and i said to her um why didn't you know so she was saying i don't know it, it was uh, the story gets long and confusing we don't even have time to be getting into it but basically i said to her i said well um she said well i ain't gonna tell her nothing i said well you shouldn't have told her nothing to begin with she said, but she's my friend. I said, but if she was your friend and you knew something about her man, why didn't you just check her man? Mm. She said, oh, that's not my place. Okay, then you're not her friend. Because if I saw your man and you my neighbor, you understand? If I saw your man, I sit up in your house and I walk up <laughs> in Walmart and I see your man some key key and smiling up at some chick face. Your man going to make, I'm going to make eye contact with him. I'm going to make sure he see me, see him, see me. Right. Because in the back of his head, he going to say, she going to tell my wife. But right. he ain't never going to worry about me telling his wife because I'm walking up to him and to his, and to the girl. And I'm going to say, how your wife doing? <laughs> I don't care if I just left your house with you in it. I'm going to say, how your wife doing? So to let her know, that one, we know each other. Two, right. are you married? Three, I know the man, the wife, and I'm right. gonna go and I'm gonna and I'm gonna make a scene. So That's step a good off. Friend. That's you a understand? great friend. And I told her. She said, "Well, you're not gonna come back and tell. What's the point of me coming back and tell you? Because one, now what if I come back and this is what exactly how I explained to her. If I come back and tell you, and that just happened to be his cousin, mm, right." Then I look like I'm starting trouble. Right, right, right. Okay. If if even if he was cheating, if you decide to take him back, now I can't come in your house because now you got to choose your man over me. I can't come back mm. in your house because he mad at me. Right. I'm not coming back to tell you nothing. I'm gonna check it right then and there because it happened in my face. Why am I coming? Why am I waiting? To come back and ooh girl, you ooh girl, do you know what happened at Walmart? Because he's gonna feel it anyway. If it wasn't his cousin or relative, he's gonna be feeling like that. Chanel might go, she might be calling my wife. She's guilty kind right. everything is gonna do him anyway. The, <laughs> but that's the kind of fear I wanna put in them. Right, right. That's all that's you the need. fear I want to put in them. I did see, and it don't even have to. That's why I said it doesn't even have to be with those type of relationships, a romantic relationship. It can even be. It could have been with your kid. If your kid is out in these streets acting a fool, right? I, you don't gotta worry about your kid. Ain't never gotta worry about me going home. Him going home and his mother hitting him because his mother found that I don't whoop your kid ass right there in the street. <laughs> now, if you find out. Then you found out. And the, I'm telling you, the way you found out is because your, your son can't sit. And you're going to ask him why you can't sit. His ass going to hurt. <laughs> because I'm not going to sit there. And again, because this is this is what happened. Um, if you go back to um, uh, Second Samuel, I think it's Second Samuel <coughs> with King David. You know, you go back to Second Samuel. It's either First Samuel or Second Samuel. I think it's Second Samuel. <coughs> King David. King David... Um, we talked about this before. King David was my boy. I love him. I love him. 
<laughs> he done, he done, he done, he done threw a rock. He done, he done used his little slingshot, popped Goliath in the head. One, one, one stone popped in the head, got Goliath down. Boom, right? He was a mighty, mighty king. He was strong. He was fearless. He was courageous. He was brave. You understand? He was everything we want and I would, and I would do, right? But he was drama girl. He was too much drama. He went and slept with Bathsheba. Bathsheba was another man's wife. I mean, it was another man's wife. But he didn't just sleep with another man's wife. Now, remember, King David was... Um, the, 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 the people didn't want King David. King David. They wanted King Saul. They wanted Saul. God put David on the throne. Man put Saul on the throne. Okay? Um, he wound up sleeping with a soldier in his army. He slept with his wife. He had that soldier... Um, get, he set that soldier up at war to get murdered at the war. So he could keep his wife. But that's right. not the, the but that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is he, the person who killed the who killed the husband, Bathsheba's husband, was um was King David's best friend. He told his best friend to go kill this man so he can sleep with his wife. Let me tell you about why his that. so his best friend. This is why this is why I put a lot of onus on friends because as my friend and at david's friend should have he should one he allowed david to mess up to mess up his own blessing right because david was appointed by god he was anointed and appointed by god you understand and he, all his blessings and all these wars and all this the philistines that he was beating up and killing and all this other stuff that was only through the grace of god but because you did, you committed adultery. You you had somebody commit murder on your behalf. You are falling from the grace of God. But your friend, see, but a lot of people don't like to look at the friend. The friend, instead of telling his friend, "Yo, uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't want you to lose the gifts and the and 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 the things that God has in store for you because you want to do A, B, and C." The friend, instead of the friend talking David down, instead of the friend allowing, telling David this the wrong thing to do, the friend went ahead and did it. <laughs> you assisted in a spiritual suicide. Mm. The friend assisted in spiritual suicide. What was the outcome? The man died. He was murdered at the war. Um, David had gave birth to his first son and that first son died. David was in mourning. God was pissed, was angry. It wasn't because he, he had a son with Bathsheba and that, that's the son that died. Okay. And David wouldn't eat. He wouldn't talk. He wouldn't do nothing for, for forever, girl. It wasn't until God forgave him that then God, then Bathsheba got pregnant again with David and then they had King Solomon. Right. King Solomon was the second child because that first child couldn't come about because she was pregnant with that, that, that first child while her husband was at war. And she was telling her husband that that baby belonged to him when all along that baby belonged to David. God ain't with that. See, but the friend, we understand what David did. We understand that David was, was doing, you know, was dirty. We understand what Bathsheba did, that she was trickery. And, you know, she, she did what she did. She was cheating and doing all of this nonsense. Okay. We understand that. But we ain't talking about those people. Let's talk about the people who are supposed to get us, who's supposed to stop us from jumping off that ladder, who's supposed to keep us from falling off that ledge. Those are the friends. Right. Those friends are supposed to keep you, you understand, whenever you feel like you're about to falter or you're about to do something that's not supposed, that's not godly, that's not Christ-like, those friends are supposed to bring you back to where you're supposed to be. Right. They're supposed to keep you grounded. The friend helped him commit spiritual suicide i mm. expect my friends to be friends you don't come back and tell me nothing this is why god has something called intercessors you understand i think inter this is why i don't ask people to pray for me because everybody can't pray okay and people <laughs> and, and, and the ones that can't pray those people may not like me and they're not praying in my favor okay mm. Intercessors are just that. Your friends are can be intercessors. If th that situation that we was talking about, 
An intercessor is not, mm-hmm. you don't, you don't, let's say you have somebody laying on a deathbed. You are, you are the intercessor. You're praying for them. You understand? You, who you have the conversation with, with the father. You go into the father and you say to the father, father God, please, you know, have mercy on this soul heal this person you know give them courage and wisdom and and whatever you need them to go through you know whatever they need to have in order to go through whatever season they in right now lord provide in jesus name amen you understand because you're the intercessor after you go ahead and you intercede on that person's behalf you don't go back to the person and tell the person yo i pray for you (laughs) you understand because that was a conversation that was your plea that was your even though you were pleading for them that was your plea to god you don't go back and talk about your plea to god for somebody else and and, and then go back and tell them what you plead for if you pleading you're not pleading you're not pleading on their behalf for them to know right. you pleading on their behalf for god to do okay okay you understand as an intercessor as a friend you don't never need to come back and tell me how you handled something, handle it. You ain't got to tell me you prayed for me. Just pray for me. Yeah, I hear it. Yeah, I hear it coming from Chanel. And these close friends of Chanel take note. <laughs> and it ain't that many of you. So, Rochelle, Deborah, <laughs> I, I'm a, I can literally call all of y'all out by name, Kim. It's only a handful. Few, it's only a handful of you because I'm not with it. I'm not with it. And you should know how your friends are and how they would feel if you withheld information from them or whatever. So right, like she said, communicate, y'all. No communicate. unspoken expectations. Share so with each other what I want same. you to do. Right. Same. How I want you to hold me down. How I want you to treat me. How I'm going to treat you. Right. This is why our relationships don't work. Amen. <laughs> because you got you got goals in this relationship. And, and again, like a romantic relationship, it says it in the word. Your friendship is unequally yoked like your marriage. We don't get because on that. I'm going to have to get it. Because you married to, to somebody on the next don't, mean episode. That it's or, don't, don't mean that it's ordained by God. Oh, let's bring that up because I got somebody okay. that we because could interview some on kingdom that. Marriages, just like there's some kingdom relationships, and all of us ain't in kingdom relationships. And marriage, whatever it is, it ain't all kingdom because if God didn't put that person with you, you chose that person by yourself based on what he looked like, what he smelled like, what he can do for you, what he drive. That's not a kingdom relationship. Your friendship, Don't be upset. Oh, yeah. right. Because you and your girlfriend can, can fit the same clothes or y'all got the same taste in guys, that's not a kingdom friendship. Or that, and then you definitely don't want homegirl or all my eavesdroppers. I'm calling y'all homegirls, but I know y'all got some, I got some homeboys out there too. Okay. These are these friends that you got, these, these homies and these girlfriends that you got, those are not kingdom friendships. If only thing y'all can talk about is what the bad stuff that's happening in your life, that means you're building, you have built a friendship on drama. If your friendship, it has, if you talk to your girlfriend on the phone all the time and the only thing you got to do is complain about who did what to who and what, that's not a friendship you need to be in because that's, when I'm talking to my friends on the phone, I'm, I'm sitting here like, girl, when we planning a cruise? When Hello? we going here, here, and there? Because I could care less about what the outside How world we getting does money? outside of our friendship. <laughs> How we getting this cash? Right. The air hustler. I don't got time. I keep telling you, we are air hustlers. We are we are the heirs. We are the rightful heirs of the thrones. We are the we are the, the we are the sons and daughters of the Almighty God, the King. Okay, and when our our father is the king and our father sits on the throne, but we sitting here acting like peasants. We are rightful heirs. Heirs don't go out begging and pleading and doing all of this. We can't beg for something that belongs to us. Right. We are heirs to the throne, so hustle up. Well, before we claim what's yours, before we go out, I don't mean to get off subject, but you know, I'm cooking dinner for my kids right now. I want to know how is that mac and cheese? Okay, 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 okay. 
Now, yesterday we talked about that Cheetos mac and cheese. The, the brand was the Cheetos brand. They got a new mac and cheese out. They got the Taki, not the Taki, the Flaming Hot macaroni and cheese. They got three different ones. We got the regular mac and cheese, the, che the, <coughs> the cheddar something, Cheetos cheddar mac and cheese with the spiral um, pasta noodles. Um, and I made it. When I tell you that, you see how Cheetos look, the hard Cheetos, that, that orange that's right. what the cheese was like. That cheese was orange, okay? So that already, that already wasn't good, didn't look appealing like, to me. Mm. Yeah, right. it didn't look appealing to me. So then I, you know, and I'm not in the mood to be tasting nothing that don't, that's not appetizing. My eyes are, app <laughs> you know, I, I eat with my eyes. So <laughs> I gave it to the girls first because, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> and so I, can't take, I can't take care of them. And everybody oh my knows gosh. my kids are like Mikey. <laughs> They'll eat anything. You know, one of them is a garbage disposal and the other one, I don't know. So they tasted it <laughs> and one of my girls said they ripped us off, Ma. <laughs> yes, she said they ripped us off. And the other twin said, it just tastes like noodle. It don't even taste like cheese. So I touched, oh the, I touched the cheese. When I tell y'all I'm writing a letter to Cheetos and I'm going to have a conversation. <laughs> the letter. Oh, I'm gonna write a letter. I'm gonna write I a letter. I tried too hard. This wasn't and, no, it. I'm gonna write a letter. It's not even going. I'm gonna have my kids write letters too. It's gonna be a three fur. A three fur. It's gonna be three letters in like, one envelope. Listen, that mac and cheese um, wasn't hitting. We'll just take the Cheetos, okay? The cheese didn't even come. You know how you stir your cheese in? The cheese wouldn't even come off my spoon. Oh my goodness. It didn't matter well, how listen, much. Listen, at least you tried it. You know. It was now a good you give it all of our listeners. You know, some tips. Don't go buy so, the mac, the Cheeto mac and cheese, whatever you do. And if, and if you buy it, be prepared to, to make your own concoctions. I'm not a... Right. I'm a, Mix I it can up. Cook. It. Right. I can cook, but I'm not, I would not tell you guys and lot of you that I'm an awesome cook. I, I can make food that's edible. Um, right. We're not starving up in here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if you buy that stuff, just get you <laughs> some prepared. other shredded macaroni and cheese, macaroni, um, not uh, some shredded cheese and put it on there. Um, be prepared to have some carnation milk because you're gonna have to liquefy <laughs> it to get that cheese off your spoon. It was just, it was all the way, it was all the way out of control. I don't know. It got was time. a fun little project though. I'm sure the kids enjoy trying something new. Yeah, it was definitely, it, yeah, it was definitely something. It, I, it was a project because I was still oh, scraping geez. that spoon. I had to soak the spoon overnight. Oh, Lord Jesus. Right. <laughs> you know the name to call when there's some drama? Jesus. Because <laughs> that, that cheese was drama. All right, right, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, you know where to find us. It. I'm going to post it down below. Right. Let awesome. them know where they can find us. You know, on my YouTube, I love Shell. You can find Rochelle and Chanel. There's a playlist for our podcast videos or the Anchor app. Download the app, Anchor, A-N-T-H-O-R. We are anchor.fm slash air hustlers, H-E-I-R hustlers, H-U-S-T-L-E-R-S. Check us out. Until, until then, we'll talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>